How you doing? That sounds like the defensive line and a you know, solid scrimmage. So I guess just kind of what was your outlook mm-hmm. on maybe what, what the advantage they had or just what you saw from Saturday? Uh, I mean, yeah, they, they got the the better day out of us. Uh, looking back on it, we just didn't uh, do certain things as well as we thought we would been doing the past week. Uh, and we saw it. We made our corrections. We, we've we been learning. Uh, yesterday we went out, we executed, and we've been learning from our mistakes. So, But all props to them. They came out first scrimmage. They came out great, like everyone knows they were. So. Hey, Austin, how you doing, man? How you doing? Good, good. Look, just working against that defensive line. How yeah. deep are those guys this year? Deep. It, it seems like they. It seems like they do a rotation every other, every like every two, three snaps, and like it always seems like I have to be on my feet, like thinking, which is very beneficial for like the offensive line. You know, like going up against such like different, more adverse like looks, to where I could be going against BJ, I could be going against Ali, I could be going against. Uh, Sony, then the D tackles. We have all the D tackles as well. So they usually do. Uh, I don't really know their like their mix up or like their amount of reps that they do, but I know I go against all of them, and I just I just look up. I'm like, oh, I guess it's a new person this time. So, but it's, we're very extremely deep on that defensive line. I believe so. And big Neil, uh, big Neil Farrell. He's a guy like yeah. These guys have been around forever, right? What, what kind of guy is he? Oh, Neil! Neil's Neil's a clown in the locker room, but one of the most hardworking guys on the team as well. He uh, he's really came far away since his freshman year. He's been putting in that work over each and every year. He's been doing great things on and off the field. He actually just graduated, so shout out to Neil. He's one of the graduates on the team, so I, we got some more. So he's not, but overall, he's been having a great great fall camp. He had a great fall camp. He had a great spring. And really, everything's looking up for Neil Farrell. I'm really excited. So, Hey, Austin. This is uh, Garland Gill and Fox 8 New Orleans. Uh, keep going with the defensive line. Um, right. You see Mason Smith throughout uh, the mm-hmm. spring and the fall. Um, I think Neil told me yesterday that he doesn't even realize that, that guy's a freshman anymore. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can, can you kind of talk a little more uh, about what you've seen from Mason there? And, and it seems like he's going to get a lot of playing time early in his career. I, I believe so. Uh, he is very... He's very gifted. He's a gifted athlete. He's a freak. You know, everyone knows the how big of a name he was coming out of high school, you know. And he really hasn't sold himself short. He's been living up to the hype that is Mason Smith. Uh he was doing he's been doing great things for us. He's really giving all of us good looks and he's helping like some of the older guys get better. And I believe, yeah, he's gonna get a lot of playing time. He's gonna be a, a force to be reckoned with. Hey, Austin, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. How you doing? Uh, good, how are you? Kind of a random question here. Maybe y'all haven't even gotten to this yet, but there's okay. two overtime rules in college football where y'all have to go for two a lot more often. Okay. <laughs> that would have helped in 2018. Often, is it something like you have to, like, implement more two-point plays, or is it just, like, you have the plays that you have and you run them just closer to the goal line? I mean, that's more of a short yard situation, you know, short yards and red zone. So basically the same things that we would do in that aspect of the game is more of the stuff that we would do with that. And just, I guess, it's just more of that, you know, like near the grit, you got to get it type type situation. But, yeah, that too, I just saw that. Uh, would have helped a lot back in 2018 whenever, you know, the uh, whole seven overtime game. So, but we're not going to speak on that. Uh, Glenn West from LSU Country. Hope you're doing well. Um, doing yeah, we well. Yeah, we, we were talking with Max the other day, and he, we asked him about mm-hmm. Cole Taylor. Yeah. And uh, just you know, you, he said that he's been kind of the more the the, the pass blocking tight end or the blocking tight end mm-hmm. of the two that are really you know being considered for that spot. Uh, I'm curious, maybe what you know you've seen from him from a blocking perspective, and right. also just his overall development as a player this summer. Uh, for Cole Taylor, Cole Taylor is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people this season. A lot of people don't think that Cole Taylor is going to be the player that he's going to be by the end of this season. He's going to be opening a lot of eyes. He's going to have his name on a lot of boards, top tight end possibly, you know. Uh, But coming into his shell, you know, coming out of high school, he was more of that lanky body type, you know. But now he's he got in that weight room. He's ate this good, you know, Louisiana food, helped him gain a little bit of pounds here and there. But – all good weight as well, but uh, 
really overall in his game, he's got more aggressive in the run game, you know, uh, and then also in the pass. It's not he's not also going to be just a pass block tight end. He also can get downfield. He's tall. He's about seven foot two almost. It looks like in pads some days. But he's up there, he can go up, and he can make those contested catches. So he's going to be a very dual threat guy for us. Austin, Max was telling us that you know, he really mm -hmm. wanted to improve you know, the communication, the protections, checks, yeah. all that. I mean, he is still a young guy. How have you seen him just kind of step into that part of it, that, that mental part of that, yeah. that position? Uh, he's coming into his own shell in the aspect of just being able, like, you know, sometimes when we have to run more of a, uh, like, Certain situations call for a faster like tempo of an offense, like just trying to do that. And then he's he's back there. He's like he's telling everyone like, come on, come on, come on, and like rallying all the guys, and then keeping us in line. And also just on the sideline, if there's something else that's like, if he messes up, he'll come up to me like, oh my bad. He takes he's taking a lot of accountability for things that he might have messed up, and even some things that he didn't mess up personally. It's just, and we all like congregate together. We all talk together like. As just from the offensive line to quarterback and that relationship, just I see him just being more open to just hearing like what all the other guys have to say, which is going to help him in his game as well. And he's just becoming a great leader. So, yeah, also, I guess, uh, following up on Max, we heard right. uh, remember who it was we were talking to you mentioned that he's a very fierce uh, ping pong player. Have you <laughs> encountered this at any point, or is that kind of where his? Competitiveness really comes out off the field? Uh, personally, I have not. Uh, I'll take this chance to challenge him. You know, I'm not very good, but I'll see what I can do against him. Uh, Max, I'm coming for you on the ping pong table. But, um, like, I've seen him. I've seen him do it. I've seen him play a couple times. He looks pretty legit. Uh, I'm more of a, you know, pop it shot, the basketball, shooting the basketball, or doing um, tic-tac-toe. We got a little tic-tac board in the locker room, but... Yeah, I haven't really, I haven't experienced it yet. I'm going I'm to go after him, though. I'm going to see how I can do. I'll let y'all know next week. Hey, Austin, Jared Roser, PipeDetail.com. Um, you've been here long enough to see the ups and downs of not just the team, but also offensive right. line, good years, bad years, or I mean, less good years, certainly. How pivotal do you guys feel like this group is? How, mm -hmm. how much do you talk about that, take that to heart, those sort of things? I mean, just like you said, uh, with that experience, I have like seen the ups and downs, and I've seen what it takes to do the things that were considered like the up season for the offensive line, and I've seen the things that we didn't do whenever we were down, you know. Uh, and just being able to have that experience, and like with my like experience so far, just looking how we came, the I think I believe today is like day ten of fall camp. I believe like everybody in the room has done a great job of just maturing and just taking that leadership role that I told these the guys this like after the third or fourth day, like nobody has a role bigger than the other person in the O line room, you know? Like I'm a guy, like I I mess up sometimes, but at the end of the day I wanna take accountability for it and I'm gonna have other people that are gonna help me be accountable as well, to hold me to a higher standard. And then at the end of the day it's just just all five just keeping it tight, like we have a little boy in the room, keeping it tight and just holding everyone accountable and making sure we all do our job, you know. Um, hey, Austin, this is Shea Dixon with 24-7. Uh, Max called Corey Kiner and Armani the next wave of thunder and lightning. Right, uh, yeah. How would you describe those two now that you've gotten to see them across, you know, summer and fall camp? I would definitely say electric. That's what, that's what, I totally agree with that. Definitely electric. Both of them are, have been making – crazy highlight type plays, you know. They both, Armani, great running back, great running back. And then Corrin, uh, another great one. They're going to do so much for us. And the crazy thing is that they're only freshmen. It's amazing for just just telling this to LSU fans, all the LSU fans out there, they have a lot of good years coming with those two in the backfield. So, y'all have a good one. Take it easy.